I'd like to paint a picture of the future of healthcare. So first, let's take a look at an example of a typical healthcare experience today. Mary is a 38-year-old woman who lives in small-town middle America. She's been troubled for the last several weeks with um, nonspecific symptoms of nausea, weight loss, and joint pains. She is the manager of a local restaurant, and she carries basic health insurance coverage for her and her family. Her husband is a self-employed farmer, and they have three small children. Now, Mary has no time to take off to see a doctor. So when she finally makes the call, she's told that her first available appointment is in three weeks. And if she doesn't think she can wait that long, she should go to the emergency room. Mary's doctor's office is 45 minutes away, local urgent care an hour, and the nearest emergency department is a 90-minute drive. Mary feels it's not that bad, so she suffers through her symptoms for the next three weeks. Now, when she gets to the doctor's office, she spends 15 minutes completing paperwork and then waits 45 minutes for the doctor, who's running behind, before being taken to the exam room. Fifteen minutes later, the doctor comes bursting unapologetically into the room and immediately gets on the computer. He reviews all the information she just gave an hour ago. Then he briefly examines her, asks a few questions, and then he turns back, types some orders and notes, and says, from what he can tell, everything looks fine, but he'll order some labs and tests and have her come back the next week to go over everything before leaving the room to see his next patient. The nurse then comes in, collects a urine sample from Mary, directs her down the hall to get labs, a chest X-ray, EKG. When she's finished with all that, she comes back, checks out, pays her $25 copay, politely declines to complete the satisfaction survey, <laughs> and leaves four and a half hours later. Now, when she gets home that night, Mary is mentally and physically exhausted, and she has no answers to or relief from her symptoms. Now, I will submit to you that this is not patient-centered care. But what if it was? What if Mary's experience was different? <laughs> Let's paint a different picture. Mary comes home from work just not feeling right. Her husband urges her, not for the first time, to please get checked out. Now, Mary has dinner to prepare, homework to oversee, and preparations to make for the next day. She tells her husband she just doesn't have time. Her husband says, you know, I had this insect bite that was infected I was concerned about, and he used this program to access a doctor. He found it helpful and useful and easy to use. He offers to set it up for her on the game console in the living room. Mary agrees. Mary walks over, answers a few questions. She allows the program to access her encrypted electronic medical record. And the program identifies five doctors who are available within the next few minutes, who have the education, the background, and expertise to deal with Mary's symptoms. From the provider profile and the, patient, the doctor's individual profile that talks about her specific individual approach to health care, Mary selects a 46-year-old female physician from Portland, Oregon, and sets the appointment. From the menu of choices of modes of interaction, she selects the hologram option. Now, Mary's husband used the text-only option, but Mary wants a more personal experience with her doctor. So five minutes later, Mary is seated in her living room. The doctor appears before her in holographic form. And after an exchange of a brief, some brief pleasantries that puts Mary at ease, the doctor tells Mary that she has reviewed her patient record, reviewed all of her symptoms, and then they have a conversation a little while about her symptoms. The doctor then asks Mary to submit a blood sample, a simple finger stick, through an attachment on the device. And a few minutes later, Mary's labs appear on the, on the screen for the doctor and Mary to review. And it reveals deficiencies in Mary's vitamin D3 level. 
And according to the computerized decision support module embedded within the program, Mary also learns that she has moderate adrenal insufficiency and thyroid insufficiency, and further learns that there's an 87.3% chance that she has an undiagnosed early stage pituitary disorder that needs to be investigated further. Several endocrine specialists are identified in the country, doctors who diagnose and treat that condition, and those doctors' profiles appear on the screen. The doctor suggests that Mary contact one of those doctors and offers to facilitate the appointment. Mary declines because she will want to speak with her husband first. The doctor then says, well, Mary, at least begin a customized medication regimen to address your symptoms immediately. Mary agrees. <clears throat> she selects the home delivery option, and the doctor electronically transmits the customized formulary to a pharmacy 100 miles away that can prepare the, the medication and ship it by a drone delivery to arrive in two and a half hours so Mary can take her first dose tonight, likely feeling better by the next day. Now, if this second example sounds more like patient-centered care, it's because it is. Now, ironically, healthcare used to be patient-centered. Way back in the day, if you were sick, you called a doctor, the doctor showed up at your house doctor bag in hand, with diagnostic equipment and medication in his bag. The fee for service was actually quite reasonable, and it was negotiated between the doctor and the patient. There was no insurance involved. Now, healthcare has increased exponentially in complexity since those simpler times, as has the chasm between the doctor and the patient relationship, and this dissatisfaction by both has grown. So social and technological advances, social trends and technological advances are helping to swing the pendulum back towards truly patient-centered care. Because what we now have is doctor and hospital-centered care. This we saw in the first example where Mary has to adjust her very busy schedule to meet the doctor's availability within the constraints of the insurance company's panel of doctors whom Mary's able to see. So let's briefly look at just three social trends and just four, just four technologies that are helping to transform healthcare. First, three trends. Trends involving the patient, the provider, and the industry. You know, today, people want what they want, when they want it, value and efficiency and how they pay for it and how they get it. Overnight delivery just isn't fast enough anymore. In most industries, technology has increased access to products and services while providing increasing customization at decreasing cost. In most major cities, hailing a cab outside of an office or a restaurant has been nearly replaced with ride-sharing services that can be accessed from a smartphone when, where, and how people need it. Retail stores face stiff competition from online retailers that offer price and quality comparison, ordering, payment, and delivery options all at the touch of a button. Burnout and suicide rates amongst physicians are at epidemic proportions. And doctors point to factors such as um, loss of autonomy, increasing demands of the electronic health record, and increasing uh, productivity targets placed on them by employers requiring that they see more patients with less time, leading to erosion of the doctor-patient relationship and increasing dissatisfaction by doctors and patients. Increasing cost of health care and quality of care and access to care, um, those concerns abound within the healthcare industry. Healthcare watchdog groups, point to the alarming rise of opioid abuse, medical errors, and medical harm as the result of not having the right data available at the right time for doctors to make accurate diagnosis or prevent medication errors. So those are just four social, four, three social trends. Now let's briefly look at four technologies, and again, just briefly, 
Let's visit um, blockchain, artificial communication, or artificial intelligence, telecommunication advances, and um, genetics. Um, in its simplest form, and it's probably most known as the technology underscoring uh, and supporting technology such as cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, um, blockchain technology in its simplest form is a means of affecting and recording transactions in a highly secure form in small blocks of data rather than having large amounts of data being stored on central servers. That makes it much less vulnerable to hacking. In addition, blockchain technology has the ability to incorporate executable programs such as smart contract and others within each transaction. So in this regard, it holds the promise, at least, of addressing some of healthcare's most crucial aspects. That is, patient healthcare information data transfer, patient and provider contracting, and payment. Near instantaneous long distance communication has been with us since the invention of the telephone. Advances in bandwidth and imaging technology is allowing us to have different options now. Options such as augmented reality, virtual reality, and holographic imaging capability with feedback, tactile feedback capability. So it's see me, hear me, feel me. Managing the explosion of healthcare data has been more and more relegated to computer generated algorithms that can process trillions of transactions and data points per second. This is making the human aspect of these decision processes less and less important, important as the field of artificial intelligence virgins. And finally, medical decisions based upon an individual's genetic makeup rather than an averaged estimate of a general population will give us more uh, popular or more accurate medical response to therapy. Having an individual's genetic in information available will allow for customized diagnostic and treatment regimens. So in the second scenario of, patient's exper of Mary's experience, we see how social trends supported by technological advances come together to provide a truly patient-centered experience. When Mary's appointment ends in the second scenario, it's been 35 minutes, not four and a half hours. It occurs on her time frame in the comfort of her own home. And she actually has answers at the end of the appointment. When Mary closes the program, the payment is simultaneously securely made, and it actually includes the doctor visit, the lab result, the lab work, and the medication. And because of the efficiencies inherent in this form of encounter, the cost is actually quite reasonable, nearly supplanting the need for insurance. In addition, Mary's electronic medical record is automatically updated and secure, so it is readily available for Mary's next appointment with whomever doctor she chooses. And speaking of that next appointment, the program will send her an automatic text message so that she can make an appointment the next day at the same time for that endocrine specialist. And because Mary had such a great experience with this encounter, she's much more likely to follow through, providing that crucial next step in her care so her health is improved. This, this is the accessible, secure, quality, affordable health care of the future. And given the unique challenges that this form of health care delivery addresses, rural America is likely to lead this transformation. Thank you.